Uh, so it's kind of like two quizzes, but you'll take them the same day. Uh, one will be on Luther and the Reformation, and the other one's going to be analysis of images. So we'll focus on that a little bit today. Uh, before we do that, let's focus on a little bit of vocabulary. So I'm going to have these words in Edpuzzle, okay? And then I'll give you a question, and hopefully you get 100%. So the first word is Catholic Church, which is true about the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is the Christian Church. Uh, so I'm reviewing now what the Catholic Church is. It is a, a Christian Church, a monotheistic Church, uh, led by the Pope that became the most powerful Christian Church in Western Europe during the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. Okay, next one is Pope. So the Pope is the leader of the Catholic Church. I might not uh, include questions after all because it's kind of weird. So the Catholic, uh, the Pope is a Catholic uh, priest. Uh, he is the leader of the Catholic Church. He is said to replace um, St. Peter. Uh, there's been hundreds of popes since St. Saint Peter. And uh, the Pope is considered God's representative here on earth. You will see that Protestants do not see the Pope as being uh, a specifically important individual. They see him as just a, a person. He is not holy in any way. In the Catholic Church, there are seven sacraments. Um, in the Protestant churches, there's mainly only two. And we'll talk about them today a little bit. Um, but the church... The church was teaching that you need to have these sacraments in order to be saved, in order to go to heaven. Uh, and the only way you can do that is through the Catholic Church. Number four is indulgences. Now, the church um, didn't always sell indulgences, right? It gave indulgences to people for doing good deeds, going good, doing good works. But during the time of Luther, the church was selling indulgences to build St. Peter's. And people, uh, Luther himself, saw it as an abuse of power, saying... First of all, these things don't work. And if they did, then why doesn't the Pope just do it out of the goodness of his heart? And then we have Martin Luther, who uh, was a Catholic uh, Christian um, uh, monk, priest, who fought against the Catholic Church. And to some extent, won, right? Because there's about 500 million Protestant people today that uh, came out of, the, of this Reformation movement that Luther started. Okay, so today we're focusing on images, primarily images. Uh, all these images that you're going to see are primary sources, right? They are sketches created at the time of the Reformation. Now, did they happen exactly at 1517? No, they happened in a little after. So what this shows you is that Martin Luther did become uh, a person that was followed, a person that was very influential. There is many people that began to question the church, once they read about what Luther was saying, they're like, oh, that makes sense. So today I'm going to focus primarily on um, on images. And some of them are focusing on the corruption of the church. But, but there's one in particular that focuses on the opposite, right? On the, the well, well, you'll see right now. Okay, so let's analyze these images. So when you analyze images, you have to consider who made it and what and what is the purpose of it. So um, the the title of this is, is document one: a hobbling the younger self and doges in 1529. So 1529 is about 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 years after Luther uh, posted his 95 theses in 1517. So here you need to understand what is the purpose of this, right? So the purpose of this is. If I zoom in here, it looks like it looks like uh, people are paying in paying pain here. They're paying or they're paying here, maybe. And in return, they get a document. So selling of indulgences, right? You have to consider how the people that are selling indulgences are represented. So this is, looks like a, a person that sells indulgences. So think about what this person looks like, right? Uh, how is this person being portrayed? Um, what do you think is the point of view of the of the artists, right? Think about these guys, and then think about the people buying indulgences, right? They look like they're poor, they look like they are older, they look like they don't have much, and how are the people of the church being portrayed? 
kind of like uh, kind of scheming, right? Again, I don't want you to think that this is what I think, right? This is just, this is a primary source. This is what people that opposed the Catholic Church were saying, okay? That the church was taking advantage of people. Now, does the church do this today? No, they don't, right? I myself grew up as a Catholic, okay? Uh, okay, let's move on. So what is that? So I will ask you, what do you think is the point of view of these images, right? They will be short answers and you have to consider what you think. So it's not about what I think, it's about what you think as well. I'm also giving you ideas. Think about what, oh my God. So this guy, this guy, this guy. And then here's the Pope selling the indulgence or giving the indulgence to the people. Look at this little old lady. Right. Uh, what is the point of view of the artist towards these people? Okay, That is the message that I want you to get out of this. Uh, this one's a pretty easy one, but they get a little harder. So just watch this one. So again, this is a primary source because it was made at that time. Next one. This is a really, really powerful one. Okay, so let's start with this image. So this one comes together. So here we have Jesus, right? And Jesus is washing the feet of, of his followers. So what is the message that the artist is sending about Jesus? No, it's not that Jesus likes feet. That's not the message. Uh, part of the message is that Jesus is a very, very humble person. That he is willing to do this for his followers. That he's willing to, to sacrifice himself. Uh, he doesn't have any pride. That's the message of this, of this side. But then we have here. This is the Pope, and this is a king. Okay, so what is the what is the compare and contrast the author is sending here? Jesus is doing this, the Pope is doing this. Shouldn't Jesus be getting his feet cleaned by a king? But he doesn't because he's Jesus, he's humble. And then we have this, this one right here. The Pope is getting his feet kissed by a king. What is the message that the, uh, that, the, that the artist is sending to, to, the, to the viewer? So the title, this is another primary source. It says, Lucas Craner, the Elder, the Painter. It says, Christ and the Antichrist. So Christ and the Antichrist. Uh, so here, again, you have to understand what, what is the image, what is the message that the artist is sending? Right? Jesus is cleaning the feet of, of his followers, of, of his poor followers at that. And then here we have the Pope who's sitting on a throne. He's getting his, his feet kissed by a king. Um, and here is a pri another primary source. Here, um, Leo X, the, one of the, the popes that um, was around when Luther posted his thesis, he said, Rise, O Lord, and judge this cause. He says, A wild pig, he's referring to Luther, has invaded your vineyard. Now, a vineyard is something that's really pretty. Let's find out if you guys might not know what a vineyard looks like. Vineyard. Yard. I don't know what that is. A vineyard. Oh gosh. A vineyard. A vineyard is something that is really beautiful, something that should be protected. It's it's beautiful, amazing, incredible. That's what a vineyard looks like, right? And then here, the Pope is saying, rise, oh Lord, a wild pig, this, this beast has invaded your vineyard. Bring all your saints, bring the saints and the whole church whose reading of the Bible has been attacked. So come, come help us. This animal, this wild boar, this wild beast has attacked. Okay. He actually calls him a boar, but I changed it up a little bit. And then Luther, Luther says the following. He says, we punish robbers with the sword. We kill people that steal. We, pe we, we kill people that don't believe in God. And then he says, let us throw ourselves with all the weapons we have at these masters of hell. He's calling them masters of hell. These cardinals, these popes, and all the smell of Rome that does not stop to corrupt the church of God and wash our hands with their blood so that we may free ourselves from the most dangerous fire. Uh, so this is what he's saying. I don't think he's actually saying fight them, but maybe he, that's what he meant, right? Here's another one. So here is, again, a compare and contrast. Here is, here is uh, Jesus being shown uh, attacking the tax collectors. 
the tax collectors who are taking advantage of the of his followers or the of the people, right? And Jesus is like trying to whip them away. Okay, that is that is that's what he's saying in this image, right? Again, uh, primary source. Okay, and then he shows this one. He shows the Pope selling indulgences, right? So what message is the artist sending about both Jesus and the Pope? Even the dog is not happy. Okay, what is the message that he's sending? Here, Jesus is protecting his followers from tax collectors and people that are taking advantage of people. And then here, the same artist says, look at this now. What is happening here? Again, what is the message that the artist is sending, right? Okay, this is a, this is one that is, so this is pro-Luther, pro-Protestant, pro means for, pro, uh, pro, for, for Protestantism and Protestantism. And then here we have this one that is against Luther. And think about what is the message that's being sent here? What is the message that the artist is sending here? Uh, this is supposed to be Luther. That's supposed to be Luther. And this is El Diablo. The devil. So according to the artist, Luther is being controlled and fed by the devil. Right? You see how the devil is speaking to him through his ear. Whatever comes out of Luther's face, whatever comes out of his mouth, is actually the word of the devil, according to this artist. So think about that one. Okay? And then we have this one here. Here, Jesus, I think this is, I think, I think, this is what my inference is, that Jesus is giving, being given a crown of thorns, I think. Or he's being punished, right? Something to do with his head, something to do with the thorns on his head. Right, this is Jesus sacrificing himself, being being hurt. And then we have this image of the Pope being given a crown like a king. Right? So the big idea that I want you to get here is that the author is trying to uh, compare and contrast. This is real Christian. This is real Christian. Real Christianity. Real Christianity. And this is not Christianity. This is the Pope taking advantage or the church taking advantage of the people. Jesus will not be okay with these images, right? Not these images, but these actions that the Pope is taking. According to this artist, Jesus will absolutely not be okay with this. Jesus will not be getting crowned. Jesus will not be selling documents that are false according to the Protestants. Jesus will not be getting his feet kissed by kings. Instead, he's doing, he's actually cleaning people's feet. Okay. Uh, that's the last one I had. This is an interesting video that I want to show you guys. I don't think we're going to see all of it. Catholic Orthodox for Martin Luther's pub. The Protestant Reformation is widely known for Martin Luther's publication of his 95 theses or disputation of the power and efficacy of indulgences, and marks a second schism of sorts for the Catholic Church. In reality, the reformation of Western Christianity was long in the making, and Martin Luther was not its only leader. While many view the start of the Protestant Reformation as having been in 1517 following the publication of Martin Luther's theses, the actual date of its beginning is somewhat unclear. There were essentially three main Reformation movements, one in Germany, one in England, and one in Switzerland, with all of them occurring around the same time in the 16th century. The German Reformation, led by Martin Luther, is generally the movement that most people think of when the topic is discussed. Martin Luther, prior to the Reformation, was actually a professor of theology and a priest. During his time as such, Luther was sent to represent the observant German Augustinian monasteries in Rome between the fall of 1510 and spring of 1511, where he came to notice a lack of spirituality throughout Rome that left a lasting negative impression on him. This pessimistic view of the church only worsened after Luther discovered a Dominican friar, Johann Tetzel who preached that sins could be forgiven by the purchase of a letter of indulgence approved by the Pope. 
allowing for one soul to skip time in purgatory before entering heaven. The money from these indulgences was being put toward the rebuilding of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, which Luther bravely claimed should be paid for by the wealthy Pope himself. In response to this indulgence controversy, Luther wrote his 95 Theses, which was supposed to inspire a debate about the issuance of indulgences, with the assumption that his concerns would be heard and understood. Copies of the propositions were sent out to a few friends, and to Archbishop Albert of Mainz, who was Tetzel's superior, accompanied by a request for the friar's preachings to be stopped. Luther's grievances were not met with the reaction he anticipated, and his disapproval of the church began to expand into growing theological disagreements. So at first, his, his goal at first was to reform or make the church better. By 1518, Luther had come to believe that the view of the church, which stated that salvation came from both the grace of God, in addition to good works and human actions to earn reconciliation, was utterly false, and that humans were unable to earn salvation. It was simply an act of God's forgiving grace. Furthermore, Luther came to the conclusion that the Bible itself should be viewed as the only reliable source of information and authority, as opposed to the teachings of the church and the Pope having that role. Since the printing press had recently been discovered, this gave Luther a vast advantage, as new translations of the Bible could now be printed and provided to anyone with the ability to read, so that they could learn from the Bible themselves instead of relying on priests and other clergy members. In Switzerland, a reformation paralleling Luther's began around 1522 under the guidance of Huldrych Zwingli, William Farrell, and later John Calvin. Zwingli, a priest, taught... If you heard of Calvin and Hobbes, uh, this is who he's named after, Calvin, John Calvin. Similar ideas to what Martin Luther was preaching in Germany, but on an even more radical level. Beginning in Zurich, Zwingli's movement quickly took a stronghold in the city, and by 1526, Farrell, a fellow reformer, began to assist him in spreading the message to the French-speaking parts of Switzerland. So, I'm not going to go into what each particular person was teaching, but I want you to understand that these guys formed their own Protestant churches, and then those churches break up even more. Giving sermons in different cities, including Geneva. In 1536, Farrell met John Calvin, who authored the Institutes of the Christian Religion Doctrine, and would help Farrell to organize the Reformed Church of Geneva. Additionally, Martin Luther was not the only reformer to translate the Bible into vernacular for the masses to read themselves, as the Swiss did the same. The Reformation also spread rapidly in Switzerland, and Calvin's work reached as far as Scotland to the west and Transylvania to the east. As both Calvinism and Lutheranism gained traction throughout Europe, England fell into its own Reformation. In the far west, King Henry VIII prompted the third simultaneous Reformation for both religious and political reasons. Mainly, the monarch was outraged by Pope Clement VII's denial of an annulment for Henry's marriage to Catherine of Aragon. In so this is a whole different story. In England, the Reformation happened not really for religious purposes, but for political purposes. He wanted to get a divorce from his wife, and the Pope said no. So he's like, okay, bye. I break up from you. 1534, the English king declared that he should from then on be the only final authority on all matters within the English church, thereby establishing the Anglican church and the start of a new reformation movement. King Henry also insisted that the Bible be made available for the people, demanding that every parish obtain a copy, and additionally requiring that liturgy be prepared in English. Paralleling Henry's changes, Scotland opened Protestant Reformation in the form of salvation was interrupted. Combine the spread 1618, even violent. So I, I wanted to clarify that the book of 
it was a commercial that um although the the Catholic Church is no longer the only Christian church in Europe, the Catholic Church is sti still the most powerful church English uh, uh, the most powerful Christian church in England the Catholic Church is still the largest Christian church in England we'll talk about that on Friday of its um, how the church is still very very powerful just because the church is broken up does not mean or the Christian church is broken up does not mean that the Catholic Church disappears the Catholic Church still continues to be very very powerful and influential in Europe at this time I'll see you guys later